This is better, isn't it? I had a little choke in my, my, my throat. Hello everybody. Yeah, we are playing around with Squad again. Today I wanted to talk about the synthesis and uh, hopefully everybody is okay and fine. We had of course sad news this week about uh, this member of Craftfact um, who, uh, who passed away, 70 years old. It's of course far too young. Uh, cancer hit him. Yeah, it's a sad... Uh, sad week for music again and I consider the uh, Kraftwerk as the Beatles from Germany and of course they are the most influential uh, electronic uh, band uh, here on this planet they uh, influence hip-hop they influence Depeche Mode the whole English scene so uh, yeah it's uh, it's sad but uh, yeah this is how life goes um, can you hear me now? Yeah, Chibaka. Ch yeah, Chibaka it was. Everything is fine now. Yeah. Um, so everybody in the ch uh, chat room, hi. Great to see you again, guys. We are very busy. I had a little live stream on Facebook. Maybe you missed that or maybe you saw it, where I showed the colors of Punch 2 in the next release, which we will have in uh, May. Um, and you see also here in Quad something new, you see the waveforms. So they're going to be displayed. And this is a nice patch because what I'm currently doing is um, tagging and that is no fun. I can tell you tagging all the presets. Uh, we have a bit of automation on that subject, but it's still a lot of manual work and over 750 presets are inside Quad. So there's a bit of work, but that makes that you can in, um, if you use complete control, that you can search in the presets on certain characters. So let's say if you say I go in quad, you say I want both strings type of thing. Yeah, well, that's one preset, Tropic Keys. Jamal, I double click it and then it's a bit like both strings. Or you say soundscapes. If you want soundscape, you have here. Okay, double click it. So uh, yeah, this helps. So it's a bit like the tagging what we also have in our own bank manager. But of course, the cool thing, if you have then uh, uh, this complete control is that you can not only search inside Quad, but search over the whole library uh, with uh, all the um, uh, contact sample libraries, all that things are done together. The only disadvantage is it's make your user interface bigger because yeah, you have in top, you can show the dials, the dials here. And on the right side, you have the browser. But in general, it causes no issues. This, uh, you see, quad is visible here. And this is new, this waveform display. Yeah, and um, this is a preset, which uh, is a sound together with, uh, therefore it's Joro, we made a bank together. And this is a gathering pad by Jamal and myself together combined. Um, yeah, the, um, I found some very interesting, because I need to, uh, checking the taggings, I found some interesting presets. The audition bank has quite some extreme things, but so now and then you drop into a sound which is uh, very interesting. Uh, let me see if I can find it for you. Um, this one, Pat. So 
Um, it plays a preview here. That is the down here. You have a volume control, so it always plays a little audio preview. But if you want to load the sound, you need to double click it. So now it loads. Can you see here the changes of the waveform? Very grit, gritty sound, and that's very nice. There was another one, which I think... Uh, so what I did in the introduction bank, I picked, of course, some of the typical sounds. And let me see which one... Oh, that one, this one, the movement. Pat the movement, which is not in the introduction bank. But if you have quad, check this one out. Um, the movement in the... Uh, audition bank of course I could also load it by using here so now I clicked it here but essentially if you are <coughs> if you're working in the end guess you should stay there okay so here the movement double click goes very stereo You see here the waveform, it's the X and Y change it. So if I move it around, you see how much the, it's the triangle, how much this wave shaping changes the waveform. Interesting, isn't it? So that was an idea. A customer emailed us, hey, Rob, is not an idea. I think it was on uh, YouTube uh, to have also the waveforms displayed because we have that also in Go2 and in some pages of, uh, of Predator 2. So this is going to be very soon inside this one. Okay. Um, okay. Somebody is um, something typing about key generators in a chat room sorry guys but that's shameful if you do something like that in a live stream if you like to use hacked software uh, be my guest but stay away here okay so if it pops up again he will be blocked so let's go back to the fun parts so um in you see here all the banks so what you miss in um if you see here in the this menu where my mouse is let's see if you can see it guys i'm not sure uh yeah i think i need to check here on my screen if you can see the right side of quad or the left side i should say uh, then it's the preset part. Let me see because yet the it's the case that for some reason oh yeah you see it it's just by below the keyboard. Uh, maybe the keyboard should be a bit higher. Let me show you. Okay, so sorry for moving around a bit. Let's go a bit down. So here you can see all banks and in the uh, NCAS version we don't have the introduction bank otherwise the preset would pop up double so it starts right away with synth sounds and um, characters are here why on uh, some things are not shown I'm not sure why I think it has to, oh with types I need to put off types then I see all the other sounds <laughs> So yeah, then it clicks here, and then this is a synth sound, of course. Very classic, you see, the saw waveforms. So, and this is the synth sound, so 
The only difference is then that the introduction bank is not there. We added the introduction bank to the subwoom base bank because so many people are known to the presets in the introduction bank with subwoom base too that they would miss it if I would use it as an anchor. So, uh, so another sound which I run into, which was very interesting. Let's see the last bank I was working on tagging. Okay, so when I click here, it goes back or banks. I think it was this one. Has some very good sounds. I think this one, yeah. Ah, sheep loss. Very nice percussive. You hear that? A bit. So that's really uh, the reverb makes also the sound if I put off the reverb. The reverb really is part of the sound. It really adds this uh, dimension. So. Uh, yeah, also this was a very good one, the fifth. Or a analog type bass. Uh, but maybe it's a good idea when I talk about the synthesis, what makes it so different. Uh, one of the biggest examples are, of course, inside the uh, dubstep bank where you have all these wobbles which the totally different wave sounds. And if I put down, you see the type, the basic waveform is a sinus waveform. If I put down the amount, you always have a sinus waveform. So the phase distortion which distorts the phase of the, um, of the waveform adds all the harmonics and down here on the wave shape it shapes the waveform so that makes quite totally different from the other synthesizers of course wave shaping and phase distortion we already have a bit in uh, bluetooth for the ones which are known to Bluetooth, but that's different arranged. In Bluetooth, you have your one screen where you also can do this. But this is... Uh... Now, and you see the X and Y down here is modulated. But let's go to another example. I think it's in the introduction bank. Let's pick it here. Uh... Oh, well, we also can pick it in, in here. I think it's in the pads. Let me see. Oh, in the ambient bank, I think. Yeah. You hear the movement? Well, that's nice. Now you always see that this form is this waveform is really changed. So when I shut down oscillator two, we only have oscillator uh, one. There's a little bit of gap active. That's very little bit. So essentially, I mean, we have many waveforms, even the additional spectrum waveforms we added, although in the first release, we don't have the additional waveforms because my idea was if you take simply a sinus waveform and you use the phase distortion and, and, and wave shape, that you already create different waveforms. By using this, these, um, these two things. Of course, um, yeah, so this is also an example sound. Okay. 
Maybe this one is also a good example. Let's see how the waveform. It's a very dark sound, but also here's a little bit of wave shaping added. Uh, yeah, I'm checking here the um. The chat room also. Yeah, I mean, Vecto and Quad are two different machines again. It's, it's, it's sounds you make with Quad because ahead of this, because that's the other news, because somebody mentioned that the on a normal HD screen, the 100% version is a bit small and 150% is a bit too big. Now, I have a quite high screen, 1440, but what we will have also in the next version is 125% screen. So we have an additional size. Okay. Um, okay, let me see. So if I go here to um, Facto. Let's see, it's a totally different machine, although it looks very similar because, yeah, this was originally also a um, a, um, a Reason version. So, uh, yeah, here we have some. Let me show you a few sounds. So this is using four oscillators and you combine the XY to go from one oscillator to another in volume, but it has waveform and samples on board. So in terms of synthesis, this is a totally different beast compared to Quad. I mean, the wobbles what you heard with Quad, that's an all different story. So let's go back to Quad again. And um, all banks, there's of course also the introduction bank, default preset, double click. And now it loads quite. And you see, this is the 150%. It's a bit bigger, but we have very soon also for you. You see down here, 100% size, 125%, 150% and 200%. 200% is of course for the um, the 4K screen users. So when I start simply, so if you say, okay, what can you do with the waveforms? Yeah, essentially. A lot even if you have a simple sine waveform using one of the and of course I need to open this here this two point let's take one which is you see the whole shape of the sinus waveform changes all type of phase distortion You hear a bit of scrolling through it, but this already, you see, adds a lot of yeah sound options. Yeah, and you could use then, for instance, an envelope here, an envelope. I would pick a synth envelope, free envelope one, and crawl, for instance. And the trick is, if you want to do oh. Where's my mouse? Here's my mouse. Simply drag and change. If you think this, or you want this movement, well, I would take this movement. So this is the Y movement, which I want to address. So by moving the dot, I can see which one is cool to change. And I go to oscillator one, um, the Y. Now, okay. Okay, now I need to change, of course, the envelope. Of course, do you see this little dot moving? That's the movement in the background. Of course, I could have a... So now, from a sinus waveform, They already have a very different sound.
And this, of course, is how strong it works. How strong the... And a cool thing is, if you do this by changing the type, you get each time kind of weird things go on. So now it's now it's the phase distortion modulated by saw. Sounds a bit like sync sound. Static noise. Transit. But of course, the first are like that, so I go back to the first. So now you already have a one oscillator synth, and essentially by... I could make this already a nice sound simply by adding a bit of LFO. So let's show it how I create then a sound with, for instance, this as bass. So I would say, okay, we use the uh, um, free LFO one. Put that one on the oscillator one fine pitch. So add a bit of vibrato. It's too deep, but I'll make it a bit less. Now what I would do next is maybe give a bit more spatho thing, I could say. Okay, let's maybe add a saw waveform and make that wide. So now it's, uh, we had that last week, we discussed the spread. So now it's one oscillator with oscillator two. But once I open spread, it's a multi oscillator sound. Now, and then what I will do now, because I want to combine these together, I want to make with this one a more a body sound. So I would send this one to filter two. For this, I need to select here filter two, oscillator. That means that if routing is oscillator, that filter two gets oscillator one, and oscillator one gets filter two, uh, filter one. So, of course, I need to pick here a right Filter, I take a bandpass filter. Ah, okay, I need to select this bandpass. Open the keyboard tracking. So this is gonna be the body below this other sound. So let's see if that works. So, uh, okay, in the meantime, I need to check, of course, uh, the chat room. Oh, yeah, Johan asks about, um, it's not an approved yet. Yeah, we need to send it in to, uh, to uh, Native Instruments, but I don't worry that it will be approved. We need to, uh, what we did is already give the parameters a spot and uh, maybe i can talk about that a bit later on but the only thing what we're doing now is tagging and which is a lot of work that's also the reason why uh when we release a new product it's never anchor s from the start because it takes several days to tag the presets and uh, then we need to create a mac version and the pc version we send that to native instruments they check if everything is in order and then we release, so we will never have NKS on the initial start. Uh, this version is not out yet, so the waveform display is not in your current quad. That will be also in the next version in May, once we release this update. Um, so now I'm just creating the sound, it's still very dry. So I could maybe say this one one octave higher. Some more. Tax in 
sound it is. Uh, of course, to make it more juicy, I could add some chorus. It's, it's a bit like an 80s uh, stacked sound. Uh, I could address the modulation wheel. By the way, that is up here, mod. That's the mod wheel. Maybe we should write down here mod wheel instead of mod. That's a good thing, which you can add in the next version. I need to write that down. Mod wheel. So there are always little things that pop up. Yeah, that could be a possibility. So um, yeah, this is not bad. I could save this one. Save preset as. Uh, it's in the default bank. Example preset to 80s cent. So uh, this is the uh, preset name. Okay, and now it's saved. <laughs> It's not bad. So the oscillator one doesn't go to goes to filter one, but the filter one is not active. If I don't use it, why should I make it active? That makes the sound more CPU friendly. Although all synthesizers are a very, a very uh, CPU friendly. The other thing which I could do is maybe give a bit of a stereo delay. <laughs> Oh, now I changed the wrong filter. Stupid me. But lucky, I can press up here, original, because that's to save preset. Okay, so I did not save it yet, so I can go back to by clicking on the original. And of course, uh, yeah, the uh, I changed the filter, but uh, I was still in filter two. So that's not a very clever idea of me. But uh, yeah, I was talking about the delay, adding the delay. So you see in a few seconds you really have a very nice uh, yeah nice synth sound uh, Okay, so in the manager, I need to set a category. This is a synth sound. It's uh, polyphonic, long release, a bit spacey, uh, polyphonic mode. It has a fix and yeah, modulation will change the sound. So though, then it's also tagged. So yeah, so. Yeah, Johan, you have to wait on the release. And what we do is with Quad, we also will have some new presets. Uh, Jamal works on some new presets for Quad. I will be working on some new presets. It's always for free then. So we will have a very cool update for Quad. Also in May, this new preset and KS support, this waveform display, which you can see here. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then we have also that there will be a additional screen size, 125% for the for uh, for some users which um, find this the normal version too small and the 150% too big. Yeah, I see Wolf Cry totally sold on um, Predator. Yeah, definitely Predator compared to Quad is has far more features but you see with quad you do different things and that's yet the reason why we have different synthesizers because you do different things with synthesizers which have a different synthesis or a different focus and um and that's also the fun part because sounds which you create with quad are um different than with predator 2. of course there are some of the sounds which are pretty equal if you stay to a classic saw or particular sounds, these sounds then also can create it with Predator 2, but things like this, what I'm playing now, it's, it's pretty typically by using this uh, phase distortion. Uh, 
You mean the waveform display, if that was easy? Yeah, that was, uh, I mean, for John Iris, a lot of things are easy. He's an amazing programmer. And that idea was came from a customer. And I think it's a great uh, idea. Yeah, it's, it's a Predator Lite, but it's also different. So if I, in Predator, I do different things. You do have different sounds because you have different functions. Yeah, you can also compare it with a hardware synthesizer. If you take a, let's say, a, a, a D50 with a DX7, both totally different machines over a Jupiter or an Oberheim. Uh, so each have their own, yeah, its own character. Um, so let me see. So I did save this one. So also on the other waveforms, so this preset, let's go back to default. So I had this wave shaping with a fuss. Okay. So I also could do this on the spectrum waveforms. I never tried it out. Interesting. Hey. Hey, this reminds me what we could do. One second. I can use velocity. Here's MIDI velocity. So we go to the next preset, making a new preset. Velocity, velocity, control, oscillator one, X, oscillator one, Y. Where is it? So controls these. Hey, that's cool, isn't it? By changing the velocity. Cool. So, of course, I could combine that with the arpeggiator. Arpeggiator. I adjust the amplifier. So this is Spectrum 7 with fuzz on the face distortion. Cool, isn't it? Let's go to filter. I added the sub oscillator. So cool, and I can use the velocity also. on the envelopes. You hear the changes in the length of sound. So I'm fiddling around. Interesting, isn't it? So now you have the normal waveform and now phase distortion with the first and the X and Y is controlled by the velocity. 
Yeah, the spread is what we discussed last week, so it is a good thing if you would check last uh, live stream. There I explained uh, spread. Once I open spread here in the oscillator, it turns not uh, into a three oscillator section. So then one oscillator stays in the middle and the other one goes uh, left, right in the tuning. So now it's a multi oscillator sound without using a Now let's see how this works. Okay, I need to press the sync. So a bit of digital sound. That is makes the quad so fun. So I simply change the X, Y from just oscillator one and I will save this preset and um, save preset as velocity up X, Y. Yeah, I think that, that tells it. So I make this uh, preset also uh, downloadable in the info section later on. Yeah, uh, sample and hold could also be an option. Now I use the velocity. Okay, let's first tag this sound. It's an op sound. It's a bit percussive. Bright sound has a fix. The modulation wheel change is determined. That's normally what I do, so I go back and add that and can do that with the uh, stimulation wheel. Save preset. So that's cool. So we another have another preset. Um, yeah, somebody is asking sample and hold on one oscillator. Definitely. So I could um, pick here the synth LFO one free lfo one also again on the second free lfo one this so the free lfo controls x and y instead of the velocity so i now i go back to normal polyphonic it's now the now do we sample and hold? Because this is so now goes the random from the LFO control C X and the Y. And the fun part, you can pick a different waveform. Okay, I need to save it, somebody tells me. Yeah, 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 sure. That's a good one. It was this one. And by the way, this is Tempo Synced on one. Let's see if it's really tempo synced. Okay, well, let's have one eight. And of course, I could combine this also with the filter. So this is a file safe preset as random on xy version one i saved this one so you can download it so it's a synth sound it's not an op sound i 
would say uh, synced X Y. Oh no, that's not, of course not the case. So this one is also saved. So, but what I also could do, uh, so this is the uh, a random, is that I can also use it on the filter. This this LFO. Uh, okay, let me see. Free LFO again. Three times the same LFO. I also could use it on the filter. Filter one. Frequency. And then I also can show you what these, somebody is asking, what is this vowel on the filter? Well, if you take the vocal filter, then this one starts to work. Yeah, you can change the vowel. Now I change the vowel. So let's don't let's keep I put off the filter now. Then it's better. Then you can hear how the vowel filter works. It's going from A O E. So in the readout up here you can see what it is. So now it's A. So this is better for the A. So now it's A. And then I go to E. I. O. U. And I could use then, of course, the modulation wheel. Modulation wheel, that for some metrics is nice. I can say, okay, filter run, control for me, the vowel. Okay, now listen. Well, it's a vowel filter, so it's a combination of multiple filters together to get a O and A sound. So, um, random on XY, I saved this also, save, breeze, add, as. And this vowel filter is. It's mainly used uh, for the choir sounds. So if you go um, to, um, and that I need to write down, if the vowel filter is not active, that the that's a good plan is also, if, if it, this one is not active, that it's fade out, just like here, you see down here, it's fade out because it's not active. So we should do the same with the vowel. So I wrote that down. So that's also in the next version, something to improve. So if we go to the pet sounds, you can see what we did with the, uh, with the vowels. Uh, pet to cryer, maybe that one. No. Let's go pets. Here's quiet 214. But this uses the, the vowel, you see here the vowel. Um, I had this other song which I played a few weeks ago, which like a bit like a fair light, that one also used this vowel filter. So it's a very powerful filter. Um, let me see where it is. Somewhere here it should be. Hmm. Okay, I need to. Oh, maybe in this one. Old Man Choir. No, that's not the one. Oh, Pat and Fairlight, that's the one. That one also uses. Uh, 
a bit like a Fairlight. It's a pet sound, and the um, the noise is sent into filter two. So this is all filter two, white noise. So now it's the vocal filter here. Now you can hear not much of a uh let's say not much of a tone height but if you add a second oscillator which is the body you have a sound that makes yeah essentially you could make also female vowel um with the, let's see if uh, maybe it's inside of it i'm not sure stereo crier yeah if this one It's also a bit like the um, the uh, the choir from the Roland VP three six three three thousand three hundred something like that. So this is a um, so it's essentially this is kind of synthesis choirs. And in the music, they can cool. They they because it's not really a, it's not a sample, but it has its own character. Yeah, I use a saw waveform because that one has a lot of harmonics, and then the the filter does the job. So if I would pick here a sinus waveform which has hardly any harmonics. You don't have the sound. You really need the harmonics so that the filter can alter these harmonics. So if I go here, bypass with both filters, then you will hear how it sounds without the vowel filter. So this is the basic sound. And then the vowel filter. Here it goes. <clears throat> And I use two to make it nice stereo. So there's a big difference between one and two. So this is one channel and this is one channel. Because you can pan the filters left right. Okay, so uh, Um, no, reduce polyphonic, we don't have this feature. Uh, in general, somebody asked about um, the CPU's usage, but I think it's it's fairly okay. Um, so 16 voices, uh, even with unison, it's very fair. What I hear from most people is that the CPU usage is very modest. My computer here, is seven years old it's a uh, i7 four quad machine and i can um, do amazing stuff with it so uh maybe a difference would be between the intel and the uh how the other processor amd because intel has this sse uh, additional stuff which makes that it can be very CPU friendly the additional things I'm not sure if AMD uses these uh... so yeah you can hear the vowel filter is very powerful and uh, I use it in the very first preset in this one also a moon pad which is really spacey you hear this little hiss Very spacey sound. Uh, I thought you were going to upgrade your PC. Yeah, well, I postponed it, upgrading my PC, because it's so much work. It's terrible. So uh, I increased the performance of this uh, computer by 
um, after a few years, I added a new graphic card, which changed a lot, a more modern graphic card. And I did throw in SSD. So the main SSD seat is uh, one, terab uh, one terabyte and the second and third disk are normal disk. But uh, if you change in the computer going from normal hard disk to SSD, that's already a huge jump. And of course, a good audio card is very important. Aha, uh -huh, I think AVX is the new SSD. Yeah, well, could be, but the uh, John Ives does the programming and he used the Intel compilers uh, to uh, optimize the um, the programs. Yeah, the filters of Quad are very powerful. And um, so this is one of my, it's a shameful sound in terms of reverb. <laughs> Nice, isn't it? Yeah, uh, installing a new PC, yeah, it's uh, it's a pain. And uh, yeah, the advantage is, of course, if you would have an i9 or whatever, which is totally blown, then maybe we would. Uh, um, care less for the CPU, but still we still focus to do things very optimized. And this is really the credit goes all to John Iris, which is uh, on that subject amazing. He does uh, use uh, parallel programming with some things. Yeah, and um, you see he's very experienced and that's why our synthesizers in general are very CPU friendly. Uh, there is an audio meter in Cubase. If I'm not wrong, it's an F2, no, but it's, it's, yeah, normally you would have a, a CPU meter. I had a tool inside Windows, but it disappeared. Very strange. Yeah, it's a bit like a Blade Runner. Did. No, not really. The Blade Runner is more this one, although I, I always make the Blade Runner in my head. It's not playing the record, then most likely I would come even closer. I think it's more this one. Maybe a bit like this, but I should... Essentially, the best way to reproduce it is, of course, listen to the original. Mostly I do things like from my head and uh, make more the impression and the feel of this particular big sound. So, um, yeah, more RAM memory is also something you can do to improve the performance of your uh, computer. That's also a good, good point. And um, yeah, I think this my board has a max on that but the newer boards are extreme. And then of course a good audio card with good uh, ASIO um, thing. Yeah, so uh, yeah, guys, about Quad, it's, um, it's very, very well received. It's again, a different synthesizer compared to Quad and all our other things. But for instance, these type of sounds like what I'm doing now with Quad, of course, also can be produced by Predator 2 or BIT in a very good way. So um, it's more the different sound which you do with the squad, which this one, very mean. You see here the waveform changing. Oh, this is a microwave one. I have two of them here. Yeah, that's a good uh, good thing about um, the um, the computers. There are some little things you can do even to improve the speed of your current producer audio card. 
the um, because the changes we had in the past from Pentium 3 to Pentium 4, these changes are not as big anymore. It's already which if you have a computer which is maybe seven, six, seven years old, you can do a lot. And um, okay, um, the last thing I want to ask you guys because yeah, we also have news that we will have in uh, May also the update for Punch Two with the color feature option. And I already um, did this inside a very short live stream on Facebook. So here we go. Um, so let me. S no, it's not sampled from the microwave. It's uh, it's created by using the. Uh, it's uh, um, it's creating by using the uh, the synthesis inside. Uh, inside uh, quad quad has no samples it's pure synthesized things what we are doing okay punch two so here you see we have a bit of difference oi, oi, oi. now up here we have a new for new screen so we have avix but also color a manager and color is the new thing what is the case with the color well the color is the case that you can use it global. That is this one here. You see, this is global. Let me go down a bit. <clears throat> Which means that you can select a color for the bass drum, color for the snare, what you like to do, color for this, color for that, sample this, slice this. So I'm, I'm throwing in some things. Users. Okay, where's users? I pick users this one. Um, clap. Oh, I take that one. This is a global setup, and if you go to the next preset, it picks these colors. So for each type of sound, and if you know punch, it has all type of sounds. You can select them here. You have bass drum type, snare, close hi hat, open hi hat, tom clap, user, and sample. Well. This is then the global setting. It's your choice, and it works then on all presets if you want that or you say reset color scheme and you use the original one but there is more because well, let's go to a default preset bank here you see a preset called color test and that one is different because maybe you are using only samples and if you're using only samples uh, a particular range of samples could be based from Another could be snare and pad four could be for instance hi hats. So in this preset color setup, you pick a color for each pad. In total, we have 15 colors, which should be enough because I think you, you don't have 24 different sounds. So you could say, okay, color two is uh, purple, pad three, but so essentially I could say this, uh, pad one color red, Bad two color. This three that four that five that six that one seven that one eight that one nine this one ten that one eleven twelve. So normally I would have then now fifteen pets with different colors is that right yeah I think I messed up at the end that one that yeah three okay you see yeah now it fits so now for this preset I made this setup because maybe you are working only with your own samples and then you can make your own collection and then you save the preset again save preset and then you have the color setup in the preset so there are two ways to have a color set, set up in the preset, in each preset, or you have a global setup. Yeah, Wolf Cry, also for Predator 2, it doesn't have any samples. Uh, Predator 2 doesn't have samples, Squad, the ones which have samples on board are, for instance, uh, uh, Vecto, or Blue 2, or Punch. 
So, um, uh, quad is fully synthesis. Okay, let's back to punch two. So you see here, guys, we have all these colors and let me know down in the info section how you find the color setup, what we did. Uh, so here, this is red in pad one. Pad two is this color. Pad three is this color. So they are a bit more mildly compared to what you see below. So uh, four is this one. So, and if you hit play, it moves a bit so um, yeah this is a color and this is a setup and of course you can save it so this setup save preset I can save this to disk preset setup one okay save it yes <coughs> so I could use this setup in a different for instance here and this one I could use it in this one load preset setup okay preset setup one and now it changes all and you see it jumps on the right side to preset so now it's really a setup for this particular preset i then need to save this preset otherwise it's lost well and the other mode is global which means that you have a certain setup for each of them and also the global setup which is now reset to the original one this is the original pad you know the original you also can save so yeah, I'll make a video about it once we have it ready. Um, so you see here, now I, I go down and suddenly I, it, it pops up in the color test in this preset, drum kit preset, which has a preset setup color. So let me know how you think about the colors. If you think they are, they are nice and good enough, we don't want to make it too bright. So pad one is this red one, pad two is this one, so. Oh, no. yeah that one is bad three yeah so if you like it that's that's good news yeah another little thing what we did is you see once the pad is selected it's a bit darker so if you have pad three you can go to the main page you can see pad three is down here selected then you can add it change it here yeah you can make your template sure so so in the color that's what you do you, if you have a, a global setting this is a preset setting you can save a preset setting you don't do it here or you have your own global setting you can save it also and then uh, this makes that you can use it on a different um, um, system so it's in the folder my documents or applications you can find these presets you can find them and back them up and use them on a different system or your own system. <laughs> okay, yeah, if you like the colors, yeah, I, I prefer the original colors, but that's maybe because I work day in, day out with uh, many machines. And if it's too colorful, uh, it's, uh, I think it's too much of a candy shop. <laughs> <laughs> but as of course you need to get used to that i mean the global setup you could say bass drum make it always red or maybe dark a blue color snare what on snare i would think about maybe this blue color the close hyatt i would have yellow also the open hyatt and of course you see nothing changes here because all the pads are now sample and i did not pick samples yet but if i would go now to a different preset you can see hey all the bass drums here they pop up these are all bass drums oh and if you go to introduction bank let's do it fast you can see how the global color works so uh, I did not pick one for the slice, slice, this one. Let's see how that looks. Uh, okay. Yeah, you need to make your own selection on this. It's up to you. So uh, it's your total freedom and that's good. I, I would always work with this one, but that's my own taste. 
the uh, preset color scheme, so the basic one. So it's up to you how to work with Sponge 2. And sure, as somebody that's mentioned, uh, is that um, Punch keeps to be uh, developed. And of course, this is one of the last features we add to it. Uh, what we also add is that in the, if you go to the, uh, that's another thing, I select here pad one, and you go to user, we have this uh, model, which is called string model. There we added also tune and a box. Tuned was already possible, but, and then with frequency, but added also a box, which is then a bit handy, more handy. Okay. So let's check the, the, the chat room. Anytime estimated Blue 3 update, that will be 2021. That's so much work with Blue 3 because we want to make it the case that Blue 3 can load in your own samples, just like you have loading in samples in Punch 2. So that's a lot of work. So um, first we release um, a Blade 2 this year. That will be the, the next plugin in the Explorer 6 bundle. Uh, Yeah, we have a lot of uh, models in Punch 2. Look, um, then somebody said, is it a project to drag and drop export the pattern in Wave? Oh, you mean a export of the total audio? Not yet, that's not, still not. Uh, but what you can do is of course the, the slicing. Oh, that's the string model is that you can uh, the patterns here if you have the audition mode you can extract this as a MIDI file um, so if you have to do that you can make it if you have the MIDI file then you could uh, yeah audio extract it simple by using the uh, computer so currently we don't have a audio how you call it audio recording of punch to playing as a WAV file Uh, yeah, the models are crazy about Punch 2. It's uh, Punch 2 has over 30,000 parameters, so that's it's far more. So this one, for instance, uses a lot of synthesis, the bass drum. So, so here, for instance, the bass drum. That's the cool thing. This is synthesis. You can make it tunes. You can click here. And you have a tuned bass drum. And this pad is pad number one. This one. You have control of the volume. Therefore you hear. Normally they would use a compressor to have this in the volume curve to have a you know, that it really but here we can make it really ridiculous long. So this is a very long bass drum. And we have a noise module without noise. Frequency. It has even a spread, which is a stereo spreading. This is mono. So it makes the noise stereo. You hear that? So click noise. Without click noise then you have here the controls for making your bass drums. The curve. Here. Then you also notice that essentially a bass drum is a very fast going down pitch glide. And on top of that, you can have for each pad its own distortion module. So I can give it a little bit more edge here. Tempo is too high for this beat. So yeah, a lot of um, different um, options. 
in Punch 2. So there is a video about Punch 2, um, but I mentioned it, I think, last week about drag and drop. So if you work a lot with your own samples, go to YouTube, the uh, playlist Punch 2, and there I made a video about drag and drop. The next video will be about the color setting and also there will be a video about how to use the FX and the multi outputs with Punch 2. So if you watch the video, sometimes you learn uh, in a few minutes things which takes um, a much longer if you would read the manual. And nobody likes to read the manual. manual. Okay. Okay, so yeah, we are over time, but that doesn't matter. We have uh, much to tell. And if you like the color settings of blue too, let me know in, in the uh, section below. If you maybe a bit later on the live stream, you always can watch it back in the playlist live stream. And um, there are many live streams. Last week of the week before this one, we had about what is this uh, um, spreading in the oscillators. And I made a drawing and uh, did talk about that. Um, let's go back to... Uh, <laughs> back for a short second to quad because somebody said well is this a sample no from the microwave it's just inspired on the microwave one and so it's uh i put off the fx you see here it's a sinus waveform and the modulation changes the waveform just like a waveform changes in the wavetable of the microwave, but it's of course changing inside the, uh, the phase distortion. So it's more the inspired on the. Yeah, the vocoder was also last week, yeah. So, and then there's a second oscillator. It's a more bell sound. So yeah, that is how the sound is. Of course, I have the microwave one here, Waldorf microwave one, which was my first official sound set released for a synthesizer. It was the signature sound card for the microwave one. Yeah, and somebody did mention F12 on the keyboard for the CPU. Let's throw it in. It's uh, this one. And then it doesn't, look, ah, performance. Yeah, I never can make anything about uh, this performance meter in, in, in Cubase. It's very strange because if, if you use an official or this other tool, which could be on a desktop, it's much lower than what it is displayed here. But anyhow, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, Quad has some different type of synthesis options, a very nice synthesizer. You always can download the demo version. It has the introduction bank and all kind of different uh, sounds uh, appear there. And um, okay. So this was it for today. I hope to see you guys, uh, uh, everybody back next week, Thursday, same time. And uh, we catch up then. Um, yeah, maybe we have then other news for you. Thanks for watching and stay safe. <laughs>